Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and sending me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Mice T. So y'all, yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos, one of which is already up, y'all. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. All right. Let's do... Which one were we on? Day 66. All right. All right. There's no need to get ahead of myself, so I don't think so. I don't even think about the goal at hand for a few minutes. Only my breathing is important. I simply exist in that calm, level state for a few moments. But there is an actual goal at hand, so I open myself to thoughts of the form I'm soon to inhabit. Fleeting glimpses of it enter my thoughts. My fingers in their length, in their lengths, and the order at which they taper down. The exact length of my hair reaches down my back when it's wet in the shower. How the strap of a camisole rests on my shoulder and the angle I have to lie on the couch before it slips off. Soon the parts Gavin singled out under my mind. The way my lower lip sticks out when I'm deep in concentration. My cheeks when I smile and how they frame my glasses. And most of all, my eyes and the way the color shines through even when half open. They're the part of me that will change the least, but they're also part of the they're also the part of the whole I'm eager to get back to. I've done this enough times to notice when things are changing, but I've gotten just as adept at ignoring those changes. This is the same as any other session. You just need to relax and let yourself be yourself. Still, I sense what feels like a dawning light, an eclipsed star that's ready to be revealed once again. I allow my breathing to swell, my lungs take in full, proud breaths of air. I'm almost there. I'm almost back. Just as it feels like I'm about to exit, I exit a thicket of trees into a meadow, my eyes shoot open and I flex my wrists. I look down to see if my gambit has worked. Hey, I stopped just short! Alright, guess I should check. It actually takes some effort to confirm because I've grown accustomed to my extra parts. But I find my skin as smooth as ever and my nose almost flush with my face. When I reach up to touch my ears, I find only hair, and when I try to curl my tail, nothing responds. I'm back! I rush over to the door to knock. Gavin exits and I stand there as he formulates his impression. He smiles the most sincere smile I've ever seen. Just as beautiful as always! We hug again. It feels like I'm still riding the high from our last embrace, but neither of us can help it. Oh god, I'm just so happy it's over! I don't have to worry about whether it's permanent or not anymore! He lets go and gets another look to double-check everything. Gosh, everything's really just back to normal, huh? Well, everything I felt like putting back to normal, at least. We'll see if I keep things like, like they are going forward. I can tell he noticed, but felt like mentioning anything would be pushing his luck. Gosh, it's just you again, huh? So it feels like the last time I saw you like this was just yesterday. Yep, just back to regular Margaret. Boring, everyday Margaret. Gavin is on his way to being concerned, but I stop before he, before he opens his mouth. I'm just kidding, really. I should probably mention something on the store's social media, though. The bookstores, too. No more fun mouse girl to ring you up anymore. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to. Nah, I'd rather let customers know instead of disappointing them when they come. Again, Gavin doesn't know quite what to say. I hope people aren't too concerned about that when we start, to, when we start selling kimono tea at the store. Eh, they'll probably just be happy enough to buy it for themselves. And you can be in full anthro mode at the store if you want. Oh, well, I'm still not that great at doing stuff with my wings at this point. Well, we should at least have a furry presence of some sort at the store, at least sometimes. And if it's not if it's not you all the time, then maybe Gavin stops breathing. His intent on not influencing me and he's intent on not influencing me in any way. Which means I'm left to decide what I'll say next. Uh, well let's see. <laughs> now then maybe Anthro Margaret can work the counter some days. Gavin barely has a breath to speak. Really? Oh yeah, sure. I can, I can work looking like I did yesterday, or maybe just a few with a few features, the ears and tail, like you did those, like you did those couple times. But you just took all that effort getting back to normal. Yeah, so I'm pretty much an expert at turning back at this point. It took what, like 20 minutes to get back to normal? That's hardly more time than my commute takes now. And maybe some nights I'll skip turning back. Gavin can't believe he's in the position of talking, talking me out of the idea. This isn't really your, uh, thing, though. Well, it's certainly become my thing through deep immersion and, well, my smile. And because I got it into you. I got it, I got into it with you. He looks like he's going to melt through the floor. Y you really have? Yeah. You like it when I'm mousy. Our customers like it when I'm mousy. And honestly, I've kind of grown to like it, too. So many good things have come out of this experience. I don't want to throw away the thing that made it all possible. Gavin's heart swells with more emotions than he can probably count. Oh, well, uh, gosh, that's... If you really want to, I... Shit, this is so... 
Don't get too excited just yet. I'm gonna take at least a couple weeks to enjoy being fully human again. But if we got a steady supply of the tea and, and we know we can turn back and forth whenever we want, what's the downside? Gavin can't begin to know what to do. That's, that sounds great. If you're really sure that's what you want to do. Gavin, he, can't, he clams up right away. When do I not get exactly what I want? He shows an odd sense of assurance to me to see me play that card. One second, y'all. Water time. He shows an odd sense of assurance to see me play that card. Ah, oh, right, of course! Now, why don't you enjoy your original, original formula, Margaret, now that you have the chance to finally have the chance, hmm? With pleasure! Take what? J522, holy mousetrimony, oh! Aww! Friends, we have gathered here today to share a special occasion in the lives of Margaret and Gavin. In our time together, we have all come to know and love these two wonderful people, and at that same time, they have come to love each other. Their bond was first formed as friends and then deepened through a series of events that irrevocably changed their lives. An event that has temporarily changed most of the guests here today. A smattering, a smattering of chuckle passes through the mostly transformed crowd. Though it brought Margaret, and Ga brought Margaret and Gavin together, it was their mutual compassion, affection, and kindness that kept them together and strengthened their relationship to this point. Their bond is strong enough to bring them here to the altar of matrimony to pledge to themselves, to their community, and to the world at large that they wish to live together as husband and wife. Please join me in making that decision binding and eternal. The rings, please. Gavin's best man hands them to the officiant. The groom, if you please. Gavin takes the ring between his fingers like he's practiced for weeks. I, Gavin, take you, Margaret, as my lawful wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, and sickness and in health until death do us part. With obvious care and concentration, he manages to slip the ring on my finger. A few sighs and some muted applause accompany the feet. The bride, if you please. I take Gavin's ring for myself. I, Margaret, take you, Gavin, as my lawful husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death do us part. I place the ring in Gavin's pocket and give it a nice tap to secure it in there. A few more laughs come from the audience. Then, by the power vested in me by this commonwealth, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Gavin lifts his wings to remove my veil, and I feel the fabric brush against my whiskers. He leans down and reaches up on my toes to kiss him right on the tip of his beak. Somehow it feels warm. Friends, I present to you Mrs. Margaret de Campos and Mr. Gavin Vonderver Vandervalk. The crowd stands up and claps as Gavin holds out his wing. I hold it with my paw, and we walk down the aisle while everyone applauds or cries for us. I've never been so elated, but even more, I'm happy that it's done. Now the party can begin. Oh, hello there. We're halfway through the line of relatives and friends when I notice a pair of eyes I haven't seen in years. Ruby, so good to see you! Margaret, Gavin, so good, so glad to be here. You look even lovelier than the last time I saw you at Tea Friends. Gosh, it's been forever. I'm glad you're able to make it from Stockholm. Oh, so she will not sound super southern. Gosh darn. One second now, water time. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Gosh, I never thought I'd be here for this. When I moved out of the store, I was praying this would happen, but now it really has. You were hoping to see Gavin get married while you were working together? Gavin looks nervous enough to know, that, to know what she's about to say, but he isn't brave enough to head her off at the pass. Well, not so much that necessarily, just that he'd get together with you. Wait, what? I think back to the times I was at Tea Friends when Ruby was there. I knew she was the one on the lease when the store was established and whose parents provided most of the initial funding. She'd left to start another business venture overseas and handed the reins to Gavin, but that was more than a half than a year ago. It was more than a year before I found the tea. When was this? Oh, ever since you showed up at the store that first time. Like the first first time? Oh, certainly. Gavin had a crush on you the moment he set eyes on you. Isn't that right, Gavin? He tries to nudge his collar down the, down with his wing. Uh, oh, I mean, of course I realized she was cute at the time. Gavin, you were absolutely smitten with her the moment she walked in the door. You really didn't know, Margaret? No, I knew he was attracted to me earlier, but I didn't know it was that early. 
Miguel, Ursula, and Nikki and I were always teasing Gavin about it, asking when he was finally going to going to work up the courage to ask you out. Hey, hey, I was dating other girls at the time. Yeah, but we always knew it would, would never last. I mean, honestly, you two are made for each other. Who else was Gavin going to end up with if not with someone who's as obsessive about tea as he is? And it turned out you two have another hobby in common, too. She smiles and winks. I wasn't going to ask, but Gavin already embarrassed enough that I didn't... I was already embarrassed enough I didn't mind keeping on a little more. Did you know about Gavin's furry interest back then? It came out at some point, though we didn't tease him too much about that. The rest of us didn't have much of a leg to stand on when it came to our weird hobbies. I'm happy to I'm happy that both of you share it though, otherwise I wouldn't be able to have so much fun today. The fro on her cheeks puffs up as she smiles and flicks her tail behind her. Oh, yeah, you look lovely. Red panda, right? Yep. You didn't sneak in something in my tea because you knew I liked them, did you, Gavin? Nope, all natural. She squints at him. If you're trying to flatter me, it's working. Well, everything's been absolutely lovely. I must I mustn't be in your fur any longer. Best of luck to you both, and thanks as always, Gavin, for keeping tea friends going well. Oh gosh, thanks! I'm gonna go chat with the old crew. So long for now. She walks past us and I watch her tail book above the crowd as she reunites with Miguel, Ursula, and Nikki. Julie oh god, Julie cuts in front of the line that's formed to talk with us. She's part of the wedding party and basically running everything while we're busy getting married, so she definitely has the right to interrupt, but she doesn't need the excuse. Hey! Just wanted to let you kids know the latest, know the latest with the Venters. Buffet's getting set up just fine, and the comedy animal food trays are all ready to go. I know it's just a gag, but I seriously saw some lady who's a deer enjoying the who's a deer enjoying eyeing the tray of grass. Me and the photographer are making sure to get the names and species of everyone, so you know who they are in case the tra transformations make things tough. Keenan is a cool dude, by the way. Said his wildlife photography skills co have come in handy. He's already got a few predator prey pairs without the subjects knowing. And everyone's loving the paw print thing with the guest book. I, a couple of the people have even asked if they can make a print to take home for themselves as a keepsake. I rustled up some cardstock and put it next to the big ink pads with the sign saying that you can make an extra one for themselves. She takes a deep breath in and smiles. Gosh, thanks so much, Julie. Yeah, you've been a lifesaver. Heh, <laughs> this is the stuff I'm actually good at. I was worried about the ceremony a lot more. Now that that's over with, I'm a lot calmer. Ah, oh, jeez, you were great as a maid of honor. I can tell she's having trouble believing me, but she takes the compliment anyway. So, you know, water time. Oh, sure, thanks. Never thought I'd be a maid of honor, but I'm not sure if I did it right. What do you mean you thought you'd never be one? We're best friends. You were always going to be my choice. She blushes almost as much as the, as much as the time as I asked her if she'd accept the honor. Oh, well, you know, I thought maybe you'd think I wasn't the type. And I know some people are kind of insistent about bridesmaids' dresses and stuff. Come on, there's no way you wouldn't, be, you wouldn't be playing the biggest role in our wedding after all you've done for us. Yeah, you were the person there from the very beginning when we started dating and get into all, well, this. Heh, <laughs> thanks for that. I guess threatening you with that bat is wasn't enough to scare you away. It was an important step in the process. I still got that bat, by the way. You tell me if I ever need to knock some sense into Gavin, all right, Margaret? I wouldn't think of anyone else first. Her grin fades as her lip trembles. For real, though, you guys are really special. I knew there was something there the first time I met Gavin, and seeing how it's all turned out is... It just makes me really happy that you two found each other. She sniffs, and I think I see a tear against her bandit mask. Aw, you're so sweet. And take a break, okay? The bar's emptied out a bit. Grab a drink or two, okay? Julie taps her vest pocket, and I hear the hollow metal thunk of a flask. Don't worry about me. But I guess I could check to see if they make a decent Manhattan. I'll grab something for Keenan too. See you at dinner. She bounds off toward the bar, her poofy ringed tail bouncing behind her. Oh, wow. Sylvia is next in line. I was already aware of her transformation since I was up on the altar. She was, a, she was hard to miss off to the side of the aisle. She was one of the few guests who couldn't fit in a chair anymore, so she sat, with her, she sat within her own coils for the duration of the ceremony. Hi there, Sylvia. Oh my god, you two, your ceremony was so lovely. I was literally crying. This is such a storybook wedding, I can't even deal with it. That is usually where you'd see a mouse getting married, it's true. And you look so handsome up there in your suit, Gavin. For sure the sharpest looking groom I've ever seen at a wedding. Gavin straightens his vest as best as he can and grins just behind his beak. Oh gosh, I figured you'd been, you'd been to a bunch of fancy weddings where the groom was dressed nicer. Uh, all those guys can just buy a suit for the most expensive... All those guys just buy a suit for the most expensive fashion house they can afford and barely get it tailored. 
That's an exquisite fit, and it's even more impressive when you consider how hard it must have been to find someone who knew how, who knew how to tailor for a bird. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!